Cruise news time. Well, there's a new cruise documentary out there making waves. It's called The Last Cruise from HBO Films, and it chronicles the outbreak on the Diamond Princess in January and February of 2020. I've watched it twice, and it's full of some shocking moments. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lida Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. And the news today is this documentary, The Last Cruise. And today's show is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. I will tell you more about that later. So do you know the story of the Diamond Princess? It is synonymous with the COVID outbreak. It is synonymous with a, a negative event, I would say, in cruising. But this documentary, let me first and foremost say, uh, seems very fair. It is a fair treatment. It is a very straightforward documentation of what happened on the Diamond Princess. And it is captured through the lens of passengers, captured through the lens of crew members, uh, all the way from a ship doctor to entertainers to just passengers. And uh, there are some moments that no cruiser wants to go through. And so I'll give you an overview of what happened on the Diamond Princess, and then I'll pull out some of these shocking moments. So first of all, this whole thing starts on January the 20th, uh, 2020. And ironic, so it's a, it's a multi-day cruise, January the 20th to February the 13th, starting in Yokohama in Japan, uh, returning to Yokohama in Japan with stops in Hong Kong and Vietnam and Thailand and other places in Japan, Okinawa. And ironically, on January the 20th, the day that this cruise started, uh, was the day that the World Health Organization announced uh, the coronavirus and said that there were four cases of it in China. And so there's there's a, a whole bunch of irony there. Now, they really set it up like the cruise life is great, right? They give you images of embarkation day. They give you the welcome message from the captain. And everything is going swimmingly until about day five of the cruise. And uh, it's, it's time to stop at Hong Kong. So they introduce us to several couples. And one of the couples are troubled on day five because they're getting text messages from their kids saying that there's something going on in Asia. You guys should maybe not get off the cruise ship in Hong Kong. Now they take that information, they go down to guest services and Princess Guest Services says from everything that we understand, it's safe to get off the cruise ship and they get off the cruise ship in Hong Kong for Chinese New Year. They wear a mask. Uh, I think they wear a mask because that's kind of culturally one of the things that you do in Asia. We're not to a point in this story where they're telling people to wear a mask and, and they go on about their business and essentially the cruise goes on without a hitch. Again, stops in Vietnam and Thailand land but when they get to Okinawa toward the end of the cruise now something is going on because before they can get off the cruise ship in Okinawa they have to submit to temperature scans which is uh, is is beginning to be a change and then we get all the way up until February the 3rd the 13th night of the cruise and uh, it's the last night of the cruise it's like get packed up get ready to get off the cruise ship on the 4th of February then all of a sudden you get the bing bong bing bong you get the announcement from uh, the captain where all of a sudden the tension starts to build, or at least it would for me. The tension starts to build. The captain comes on super chilled, super casual, doing his job, saying, hey, I just want to let you know that during the first five days of this cruise, there was a passenger on board. He traveled from Yokohama to Hong Kong, and now that he's back home off the cruise ship, he's tested positive for the coronavirus. And uh, now the Japanese officials, they want us to come back to Yokohama, and they want to do a look over of the cruise ship, talk to anybody that doesn't feel good, and then we'll go from there. So I know you're supposed to get off the cruise ship tomorrow, but it, you're, you're going to be on the cruise ship tomorrow, uh, but everything's under control. Enjoy the rest of your night. And they kept on doing whatever you do on a cruise ship. So they had all the activities and that kind of thing. Uh, the next day shows up and you got the Japanese officials on board. The Japanese officials actually jumped on board as soon as they docked in Yokohama later that evening. And uh, they, they started testing people. And uh, somewhere along the way, the announcement comes out that uh, now passengers have to stay in their stateroom, which... Okay, now that's getting even more concerning. And so the, you're kind of, you know, uh, you know, held to your stateroom all day on the day that you were supposed to get off the cruise. And then the next day, which you wake up, which is the 5th of February, which is the 15th day on the cruise, the announcement comes on that in the initial testing of people that don't feel well on the cruise ship, 
10 people have the coronavirus and the Japanese government has decided that now everybody will have to stay on the cruise ship for 14 days in their stateroom. Let's just pause there. Both times that I watched the video, when that somber announcement came on the TV, I felt tense. I could not imagine what emotions would flood you at that moment, especially say you're from the United States and you're in Japan and you just went on a 14 day cruise and you got to get back to work. And now all of a sudden your 14 day cruise is going to be 28 days or 29 days. Cause you already got an extra day there, 29 days at a minimum. That's, 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 um, uh, unsettling. And look, we know the story of the Diamond Princess. It doesn't get much better from there. Later on in the day, the captain comes on and says that 10 more people have tested positive for the virus. Now, again, the, the documentary does a great job of chronicling what's going on from a passenger perspective and a crew member perspective. And it really is uh, very different, those two experiences. The passengers, they're staying in their cabin and the crew well, they have to keep working. They have to keep bringing food to those people. And uh, they, they don't have the opportunity to uh, distance from each other. And so that, that plays a huge role in what happens over the next uh, you know 20 days on this cruise ship. The timeline keeps rolling on. On February the 7th, day 17, 61 cases on board. And uh, it really starts to wreak havoc with these couples that are on board. They're getting tested. They have to take their temperature. Uh, they're getting food that's uh, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. And it, it's really weird. Like one guy was really good about filming outside of his room. So he would film the hall. And sometimes you would see people in the hall all like in hazmat suits. He was filming out of the peephole one time. And there were people in front of his door, you know, fully in full garb. Uh, weird stuff happening. At some point, Prince is public is a video to the Diamond Princess from their health panel, their health expert, and they're talking about how this virus is only about six weeks old and they don't know much about it. The best that they can understand is that it comes through interacting with people, and as long as they stay isolated, they should be okay. Uh, that's the best uh, info they have. You can hear in the background the Dr. Fauci, you don't need to wear a mask at this point uh, clip, and so it really gives you some context of where we were in this whole process. And, and look, there's some gut-wrenching moments, some moments that I looked at Jenny and almost teared up. Uh, I'm going to tell you about those, but first I need to say thanks and tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Uh, if you are an international traveler, if you're a local traveler, if you're going anywhere where you're going to use public Wi-Fi, the library, Starbucks, anywhere with public Wi-Fi, you got to know what a VPN is. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and uh, you might want to think of it as a security guard for your internet data. It becomes the in between, between the big bad internet and your personal data. And look, I think most people out there have had some experience with data loss or identity theft, and especially when you're traveling. So whenever I go cruising, I use a VPN. When I cruise to Asia, I use the VPN so that my data would be protected uh, when I use the, the internet in foreign countries. And then another interesting thing that a VPN does for you, it, it can make you look like you're somewhere else. So say you have a buddy in Canada that's a uh, raving about a show on Netflix and you were here in the States, you pull it up and it's not on Netflix. Well, you could, you could use a VPN to be in Canada. I'm not, it's, it's magic. I mean, it's not magic. I could technically explain it to you, but the, the big takeaway is uh, you can do stuff with a VPN. And the biggest takeaway is Surfshark VPN is a really easy way to protect yourself when you go online. They have applications both for your desktop laptop applications for your phone uh, so that you can be protected anytime that you use the internet. And the cool thing about Surfshark VPN is they have something for you guys. You can use the link in the description and the code Lalita Loca to save 83% off of Surfshark and get three extra months for free. Uh, protect your data. Thank you, Surfshark, for the sponsorship. So let me tell you about the moments that were most shocking to me from this documentary. There were a couple couples that you tracked along with them and they did their, their testing and they did their temperatures. And then at one point, a health official shows up, knocks on the door, and uh, they talk to this couple and they're talking to the lady and they're like, yeah, you're positive and uh, you need to pack your stuff up and you're going to the hospital and your husband has to stay here. Could you imagine that? I could not imagine all of a sudden Jenny being taken. We're already like in a you know in Asia, and now Jenny is going to just be taken away, and I I, I won't have any way of knowing what's going on with her. 
that was very unsettling. That happened to two of the couples on the cruise ship. And then another thing that happened that was really shocking, and I don't know how these things are planned, on February the 13th, which is day 23 of this whole ordeal, the captain comes on and makes an announcement uh, to people, and there's still passengers on board, and he just says, look, uh, two people that were on the cruise ship that got the virus, they passed away. And, uh, you know, our hearts and feelings go out to the family, which obviously is a nice sentiment, but man, if you're on, if you're on that cruise ship and you don't know when you're getting off the cruise ship and now in addition, and imagine if you're the person who they just took your wife away and then all of a sudden some, you know, unknown disease from six weeks ago has taken the lives of two people. Very unsettling. Very unsettling. Another one of these moments, there were a couple, an American couple, who uh, had continuously tested negative, and then there's uh, U.S. health officials that show up. So the U.S. finally realizes they got to get the U.S. people back to the U.S. They bring this big military plane over, and uh, they send health officials on board. This guy knocks on the door, this one couple that you follow throughout the whole thing, and he's like, hey, I'm I'm Joe Smith from the USA. Uh, would you like to go back to the United States? And they're like, well, well, yeah, we would, but do you think we'll get the virus in that process? And he's like, well, no guarantees, but uh, whatever you do, get off this cruise ship right now. Like, it's heavy duty. Like, the guy gets super serious with them. Like, yeah, you may get it, but if you stay on this cruise ship, you're definitely going to get it, which that was that was pretty unsettling because, again, what you see throughout this whole documentary is nobody really understands What's going on? Again, the, the, the prince's video, you know, their conception of it was that you're only going to get it by touching people. But somewhere along the way, they start taping up the vents on the doors of the cabin. So the, the guy whose wife got taken away is like, oh, I heard some noise outside my door. And then I open the door and they've taped up the vent to my door. There's footage of like that, uh, you know, hallway, the infinite hallway on cruise ships that we're all familiar with, with just door after door with sign after sign that said uh, COVID-19. Uh, it's unsettling the crew members had it so rough they didn't have anywhere to go and you know the ship doctor said as crew members started testing positive it was weird because nobody seemed sick and so you had these crew members that were forced to work together forced to live together who didn't seem sick that all of a sudden were spreading the virus and getting other people sick diamond prince is a tragic story a lot of lessons learned at the end of the day it was over 700 people infected on the diamond princess 14 people lost their lives because of the outbreak on the diamond princess and it will be pointed to for some time to come as as a bad example of what can happen in cruising but man it is it is definitely a moment in time it's it's once they got everybody off the cruise ship some of the crew members were the last people to get off of the cruise ship uh, that ship became Became a case study for how the disease uh, acted. Uh, it was studied by U.S. officials, and they came to two very big conclusions uh, that that this virus could spread asymptomatically. People who were not seemingly sick could spread the virus, and that this was airborne. And so it, it's interesting. Uh, you know, they played the Fauci clip that said uh, you don't need to wear a mask, and, and when he said that, there was a lot of concern that people would run out and buy all of the N95 masks that uh, first responders, that medical people needed. And then uh, they just didn't know. They just didn't believe that that's the way that this virus spread. But then after you have this event on Diamond Princess, it becomes very apparent that this is the way that it spread. This ship was a super spreader because they did not understand how this virus spread. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting from the cruise life perspective. I've heard some people say, well, this is going to be uh, something negative press wise for the cruise line. Maybe there will be people that want to use Diamond Princess as like some example. But uh, if you look at it, if you look at where we were with this virus uh, throughout the whole world, it's you really see what happens when you don't know what's going on. Those are some of the shocking moments for me. Uh, there's plenty more that, you know, have you seen this? I would love to hear in the comments some of the things that really set you back uh, because it was it was, it was was a trip. Uh, check out this documentary. Boom, that's your cruise news. Thanks again, Surfshark VPN. Make sure you get in on that. This is Tony with La Lida Loca. Please hit the like button. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.